Hey everyone, this is Leanne from Of Love and Ship Lab and the founder of Sub That Tutorials and More. Please be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel so you never miss out on any new videos and check the video description for a link to the Sub That mobile learning library app. Inside of our app, you can access both free and exclusive tutorials um, as well as our various master classes for Affinity Designer and more and exclusive community spaces. In this tutorial, I am going to be showing you how to sublimate a flat double sided fishing lure. This quick and easy project is great to market all year round, but especially relevant during the spring and summer months and holidays like Father's Day. You will enjoy that this product comes in a lovely little gift box, which makes it easy to pack and go and is also a great item for vendor markets. Let's turn it around. I'll show you the, um, the fishing lure and we'll have a look at it, get our measurements and get started. This sublimation fishing lure comes in this great little gift box which I definitely think helps elevate the product overall. The sublimation piece is nice and flat, making it very easy to do on your flat press and it's a nice coated uh, metal. So we're gonna go ahead and just get our measurements here. We're not gonna worry about the shape of this. We're gonna make sure our measurements or our design is sized to these measurements and just be conscious of how big we wanna make any like text or anything like that, any image of our design. So we have two and one eighth, and we want to measure the widest part. Let's set that up on that one so it's a little bit easier to read. Two and one eighths by seven eighths. Let's get our design set up. We are going to set up our fishing lure design in Affinity Designer. I'm using the 2.0 version on a Windows device. If you're using the Mac version or the 1.0 version, all the steps that you're gonna follow are going to be the same. The layout might just look a little bit different. Feel free to check out some of our older videos if you are using 1.0, just to give an idea for how the layout is a little bit different. We always wanna start by opening up a new document that is in the page size we plan on printing on at the orientation that it feeds through the printer. So most printers feed through portrait. That is what you will set it up as. I know this seems like such a little thing, but I'm starting to emphasize it in our tutorials because not following this one step is something that leads to a lot of printing errors for people. I'm going to set this particular fishing lure up with just a simple rectangle, and you can follow that process if you are using any software program but I did create an Affinity specific template that is also available for those of you who are using Affinity Designer. It's free, you just download it and add it to your Affinity templates folder. You're still going to want to open up the new document with your, that's the size of your print page as well. So we'll come to file and then new or new document. In this case, I'm gonna be printing on a letter size page since our fishing lures are pretty small our letter size page eight and a half by 11. Um, underneath the layout tab, you can change the document units if you would like. Make sure that create artboard is not selected and your DPI should be set to 300. Underneath the color tab, your color format should be RGB slash eight. Your color profile sRGB IEC 61966-2.1. Keep in mind that your color profile on document setup is not the same as your ICC profile for printing. I have videos that talk about these different terms and how they're all related. Be sure to check them out so that you have a clear understanding of this information. If you are using an older version of a Mac, you may benefit from choosing the Adobe RGB 1998. That is the older, um, color profile and Mac computers specifically are known for having color output issues. I go in depth into how to perfect your colors with your, if you have a converted sublimation printer um, in our mastering sublimation color video series, be sure to check that out inside of the sub that mobile learning library app. 
Once you have everything all set, we're going to click Create. Now, if you wanted to be using the template, you would come to File, and then New, and then your Template section. You need to save all of your templates in a central location on your File Explorer. I personally save all of mine on OneDrive in a file that's called Affinity Templates. Yours will be named whatever you name it. You just add that folder by clicking on the little Add Folder icon. And then anytime you download a template, such as if you choose any of these ones that are on my website for free, you will then um, download them, unzip them, and save them into this folder. And that way, when you open it up, everything you've saved in there is there. So I do have a fishing lure one available right here. And if you use the fishing lure template, you're pretty much going to follow the same steps that we're going to do with a rectangle on our other page. Um, you are just going to be clipping in your digital paper or your design into this red outline layer, the bleed line, to ensure you get full bleed. When you, if you use the template, once you have your design all in here and you have gotten rid of the blue and red lines by coming to that color panel and selecting the open circle and choosing the no fill option, you will want to export the whole document. You'll go to File, Export, Whole Document. And the reason why is because I have set this already to be four and a quarter inches wide. And I'm going to show that to you over here. But when you're printing out something that's double sided and small, the easiest thing you can do is set it up so that you can just fold your page in half and have it perfectly line up with both sides. And we achieve that by having our two pieces centered here. And by having this four and a quarter inches wide, we can fit two of them side by side. So I'm going to show that with the rectangle option just for anyone who might be using a different software program. But if you're using the template, just fill that red layer, remove your stroke outline, and basically follow all the same steps that we're doing. Normally I do use templates uh, beforehand, but I actually created the template after the fact. So let's get my stroke panel out of the way. There we go. Zoom in a little bit. Okay. So we're going to go ahead and just create a simple rectangle using our rectangle tool. We want this to be a little bit bigger than the measurements that we got. So I'm going to go with two and a half inches by one and a quarter inch. Select your rectangle tool from your tools panel in the left sidebar. Click and drag on your canvas to create your rectangle. Come over to the transform panel located in the bottom right corner of your user interface. And you want to make sure that your aspect ratio is not locked. When it's locked, it's going to have the little arms. When it's unlocked, it does not. We're going to set our width to one and a quarter, which is 1.25. And we're going to set our height to two and a half, which is 2.5. So this is a little bit bigger than the measurements that we got. So we can just ensure we have a nice full bleed. Next, we want to bring in some type of digital paper or design. In this case, I'm just using a good fishing digital paper. I found some available on Creative Fabrica. There were a few different ones to choose from, and I found one that I like that's going to be perfect for these fishing lures. So I'm going to select the Place Image tool and choose that from my File Explorer. Click Open. When you see the downward arrow with the portal, you can just click and drag and resize that over top of your shape. Now, you can use the, um, your gradient tool to do like the fill tool here as well, but I usually prefer to clip it in because you get a little bit more control over how everything is aligned. So in your layers panel, you want to select your digital paper layer and you're going to click and hold and then drag so that the tip of your cursor is touching the word rectangle. That's the name of that specific layer and release. This is going to clip it inside of it. Now when you open up that group and select the PNG layer, you can then resize this and move it around however you would like to suit your to suit your preference. I am going to oops, let's make sure we got everything filled here. I'll move that up. There we go. 
Um, and I left the fill on my rectangle originally. I'll zoom in so you can see it a little bit better. That way, if I wasn't completely in filled inside of there, I would be able to see it. See, it's sort of like that gray right there. Because we're adding the digital paper, it doesn't really matter if you have the fill. Normally, I would also tell you to get rid of the outside stroke before printing. Because this is an oversized design, it's not totally necessary, but it is good practice to always do that. So come over to your color panel, select the filled or the open circle, sorry, and make sure it's on top and then select that fill none, the little circle with the red line, and that will get rid of the little black line that you probably couldn't even see. Now I am going to add some names to this. So I'm going to select my artistic text tool and I'm just going to do click and drag to start my box. I want this to be vertical text so I'm going to do each letter on its own line. We've got Kenda and let's see. I am going to choose this font called Ambig Wild. I think my letters are a little far apart, but first I want to add, make them white or something so I can see it better. Okay. So I've come to my color panel, select the filled circle. I've set that to white. I am now going to select the stroke circle and I want to add a little bit of a stroke. Let's, my stroke panel's all out of place here. Let's put my stroke panel where it belongs. So I'm going to click on that stroke panel and I'm going to add a little bit of width to that so it gives it a nice little outline. I also want to come down to where it says align and currently it's selected to align stroke to center. I'm going to do a line stroke to outside just so it doesn't overpower my letters. And then I can add a little bit more um, on there how I would like. In terms of the color, you could leave it black. You could also choose to do it brown or some other color that is part of the background. That's a great way to help things blend in a little bit better with this kind of project. So if you want to do something from the background, you can just use your dropper. I also think that this would look better if I did a white stroke and black text. So we can just swap those by choosing this swap option right up here the little double-sided arrow. All right, so I'm a little bit happier with that. I'm going to increase that stroke just a little bit more. And I wanna move my letters closer together. So because each of these is a new line, we're gonna to come to the paragraph tab and where it says leading, we can adjust that. So let's try 18. Uh, yep, 18 might work. And then I'll just resize that a little bit. And I'm gonna center it on the whole fishing lure. Now I wanna be mindful that I don't make this too big. I currently have it at 1.16. Yeah, one and a half was roughly what I was going for. I can select that height and adjust it down if I want to. That way it'll be nice. And then we'll just go ahead and center it. I'm going to thicken up my stroke just a little bit more. There we go. Okay. So because our text layer is on top, we can actually just click and drag across both of these and then come to our alignment tools. Or if you see this little bar graph option, that's like the whole panel. Select align center based on, well, that's fine. Based on selection bounds and align middle based on selection bounds and click apply. So now we have our first little fishing lure set done. We can actually group this together. So right click with both those layers selected and group. And then I'm gonna right click again and duplicate because I'm doing a double sided option. And now I wanna create just a boundary box. So I'm gonna come select my rectangle tool. I'm gonna start at that top corner and I'm just gonna stretch it across. Now I want this to be halfway across my page so that it'll be easy to do, we're doing two fishing lures. So I can do um, the two separate fishing lures and be able to fold the paper in half. You'll see what I'm talking about when we print it, but for now, trust the process. So with this rectangle, we are gonna come down here to our transform panel. It doesn't really matter what the height is, uh, but the width for sure, we wanna do 4.25.
and good. Okay. Now this should be lined up right in the middle of our page. There we go. So we've got it right on those top and side edges. Underneath your color panel, you're going to choose that filled circle and choose no fill. Then you're going to choose the open circle for the stroke and choose black. Then you're going to come to your stroke panel and you are going to increase the thickness just enough so that you can see it. Next, you're going to select both of your fishing lures and we really just want to center them in the middle of this box. So if you have them both selected and you move them over, you are going to get that red and green access line to let you know that that is centered. If you don't see that red and green line, make sure that you have this magnet icon selected. So this let us know that all of this is centered nicely. We can click and drag across all of those to select them, right click and group, and then right click and duplicate and just slide it right on over. So I'm gonna change the name on the second set for the second person. And this will also uh, make it easy, like I said. So when we print this, we can just cut off this. We've got our whole rest of our page, which we could add more stuff to, use for nozzle check paper, whatever. But we will cut this in half right here, and then we'll tape our fishing lure, and we'll just, or we'll set our fishing lure, and we will literally just fold this edge to edge in half, and it will line up perfectly on both sides. So that's just a great little trick for making sure that it's the same on both sides without issue. All right, let's just come over into here and find our name layer. And we're just gonna add our second name in here, which is Dave. And I will go ahead and recenter that. And do the same thing here. And I feel like Dave's name could be made a little bit bigger. If it feels like your letters are off, you can also choose to, oops, not that one. You can choose to align center for your text right here with your text alignment options. I'm going to do that for both of those. Just select all of the letters. And we'll leave the names the same size. That way, you know, they look the same size. All right. So once we're all centered, we are ready to print. So I mentioned earlier that if you use the template, you will export the template as the whole document. And what that's going to do is it's going to give you this whole space right here and you'll just tile them right next to each other and send it off to print. So just a little bit uh, different there. Make sure that you export as a PNG when you do that. We're going to then come to file, print, Select our printer from the dropdown. I'm using my Epson SureColor F570 Pro sublimation printer. This printer is amazing. We've been using it for just over a year now. If you haven't seen our review video where we talked all about the printer um, and haven't really been following along, I'm here to tell you that this printer is a game changer. Um, hands down the best printer on the market, the best bang for the buck. If it is within your budget, I highly recommend taking the splurge. This, it's flawless. I never have had a single issue with it. I mean, it does all of its own maintenance. Like it's the most stress-free printer for sublimation on the market. All right, so once you have selected your printer, you're then going to select properties. This is where you'll set your page size or any other set, uh, settings that need to be established. If you're using a converted sublimation printer, that may mean doing certain color correction settings. You should always save those settings as a preset if you're using a converted printer. That way you can just quickly grab it and go. You can check some of our older tutorials when I still have the Workforce 7710. I did save all of my presets. That way I could just grab and go. If you're using the Epson Sure Color F570, you want to make sure to come down to where it says source and select your paper source. Mine's going to be my auto sheet feeder. It is already set to the eight and a half by 11. Perfect. And then underneath that media type, I will choose the general purpose rigid. I need to plug the printer in. Um, so it's not registering it just now, but we'll do that in a second. I don't need a print preview, so I'm going to deselect that. For this, we do want it mirrored, which it is set to that by default. 
but again, if you are using a converted printer, make sure to have that mirror setting selected before you head to print. Once you're set, go ahead and click OK and OK again, and this will send this off to print. So here is a look at our transfer. We set this up so it would be easy to cut this and then just fold it in half. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut this with my paper cutter off screen here real quick. So we have our two pieces and we can fold them in half and uh, align our lures in between. So once you have both of those cut, all you really have to do is fold in half because we've aligned it a certain way that they should line up. Make sure that you know your paper edges are perfect and then of course hold it up to the light to verify. You can't see mine, but I did verify it is aligned correctly. And we'll do the same thing with the other one. Just a great little trick anytime you have to fold something over. Now, we want to put our blowout paper underneath and on top. Whoops, because we have ink coming from both sides. I always like to just fold this in half, makes life a little easier. We're going to set up each of our little pages. I dropped my lure, so let's grab that. All right, so we're gonna line both of them up, nice and centered how we want them. Good. And good. Also double check to make sure you're putting the names in the right direction. I'm gonna nudge mine over just a little bit there. to move your paper too much because they do jostle when you do that. I am just doubling and triple checking that I am as even as possible. Okay. So we'll kind of hold one down and fold it over. Again, hold the other one down. Make sure we're as centered as we want to. Fold it over. You could choose to tape these shut if you want. I'm just going to trust the process and very carefully fold everything over and once you have all of your stuff sandwiched together we're going to go ahead and slide it on back 380 degrees with firm pressure for 60 seconds we probably could up our pressure a little bit but we're going to let it go for right now um, with something like this you can always check it and if you need to up the pressure and do a little bit longer that's always a possibility I am gonna grab my heat gloves though because these are probably gonna be hot when they come out. Since they are metal and all, although metal does uh, cool off very quickly, especially for something this small. Fishing lures are a great gift all year round, but they are a fantastic option for Christmas, Father's Day, and just any type of occasion where someone who happens to love fishing, doesn't have to necessarily be a male, would appreciate a custom option. These are actually going to a couple who just got a new house right on the water and who happens to love fishing. So let's pull this on out. And I'll slide you guys on down. Now let's go ahead and check on, oops, check on our lures. Now I want to pinch this because I've never done these before. So I'm going to pinch this and hold this tight. And I just want to check that backside. Ouch, hot. Okay. I want to check the backside to make sure that it was fully processed. They're just a little hot. There we go. All right. So there are our fishing lures. Let's zoom you guys in a little bit so you can see better. All right, our two sides, they came out beautiful. 
I know that the people who are going to get these are going to be thrilled. So once these cool off, we just go ahead and attach um, the hook if you want to take any kind of photos. But since this did come in a gift box, we can actually just put these right in our gift box and they are ready to go. If you are a subscriber to the Sub That Learning Library app, be sure to check out the marketing guide on fishing lures. It will give you some ideas of how to price them, how to market them, aesthetics that are popular, and other products that may be of interest to a customer who would purchase these. Other than that, don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel, download our mobile app, and thank you so much for joining us.